Hey fans, fighters, subscribers and YouTubers and welcome to the most spectacular fighting show on YouTube Fighters that will always be remembered This show includes documentary stories of famous boxers UFC fighters and K1 fighters that left an undeletable trail in their sport and should always remain known and famous for their achievements Please follow episodes, send your prepositions to my Facebook and make sure that your fighter gets the next story Hello and welcome. You probably wonder why am I colored black today. This is for honor to Kevin Randleman despite I never liked his fighting style. I got to say that I'm sorry for his loss. He was pretty much young, only 44 years old. He recently died so I decided to make a documentary about him, about fighters that will always be remembered. This is your moment. Kevin Randleman. He was born in August 10, 1971, Sandusky, Ohio, US. Died February 11, 2000, 2016, San Diego, California. Recently died, unfortunately. Nicknamed the monster, nationality American, height 5 foot 10, weight 93 kilograms, divisions light heavyweight and heavyweight. He was training in Team Hammer House with Mark Coleman before joining Randy Couture, Extreme Couture Gym. He has a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but he was always a wrestler. And uh, he had uh, 33 fights, 17 wins, 16 losses. By knockout 5, by submission 4, and by decision 8 victories. By knockout 4, by submission 8, by decision uh, 4 victories. And what I got to say, Kevin Randleman had a really, really hard background. He was one of 11 children. He never had enough money. He was uh, always fighting on the street. To, uh, to try to survive, to get money and uh, in the state finals he was in Sandusky High School he had 122-11 to 11 record on the wrestling team then he joined Ohio State University he was wrestling well, he was very dominant, he was a champ he was uh, one of the most amazing three years in the history of collegiate wrestling could known in the third best win percentage in Ohio State wrestling history, but he was uh, unreliable to wrestle, unfortunately, due to academical issues. And now let's talk about his uh, UFC career. This is probably something you most like to hear. And uh, let me talk. In the first fight and in the first tournament, Kevin Randleman had a three really, really strong victor victories. Uh, in first fight winning Luis Carlos Macial, submission punches, the second Geza Kalman, TKO punches, he dropped him strong and punch, 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 referee had to stop the fight. And in the third fight winning Dan Bobish, who was then a huge name in the history of UFC, he won them via submission punches and then Bobish subdued. This is something where Randleman surprised me pretty much. Later fought in Brazil, Universal Valetudo fighting Von Ebenzer, Fontes Braga via decision after 20 minutes, Marionetto via submission punches. And first loss was of Carlos Barreto. You know, Kevin Randleman was a guy that was always weak for submissions and uh, he lost via technical submission, triangle choke. Again fought in Brazil. Von Gustavo Homem de Neve in June 15. Via submission elbow, but Tom Erickson won him via KO punches. Just forgot to say, first fight was on October 22nd, 1996. Later victories over Bus Rutten, winning, sorry, loss versus Bus Rutten. 21 minutes they were fighting for UFC Heavyweight Championship. It was a split decision. I mean, it was a split decision, I got to say. Now, I'll turn on the lights and talk about his real UFC career. Alright. He started his true UFC, I don't count Morris Smith and Bus Rutten since he wasn't a champion there. Now, I'll talk about fight versus Pete Williams, an anonymous decision, he won UFC heavyweight uh, championship. Pedro Ritz also defended UFC championship, an anonymous decision, TKO. He was near the TKO, but unfortunately he was unable to. And now, let me turn the light off again. Talking about Randy Couture, this is the time when he lost UFC 
heavyweight championship. Unfortunately, Randy Couture knocked him out. And later, KO from Chuck Liddell. Uh, KO punch. You know, Chuck was really much known for his amazingly good punches and amazingly good spamming of punches. So he shown him where his place is, really. In the last UFC fight, he fought Renato Sobral. And he won him via an anonymous decision in UFC 35. And he made him a really, really good fight. Victory over Brian Foster, KO punch. Mitsuyoshi Ohara, an anonymous decision. This was the first Pride fighting championship decision. Mitsuyoshi Ohara was really defensive in that fight, so this wasn't a surprise because he won. Also, in one of the most known fights that Kevin Randleman had, remember his famous knees versus Kenichi Yamamoto. Well, he from the north south position, he rotated him, went really, really strong with those strikes. One, one knee, second knee, one knee, second knee. It's something you basically know to remember Kevin Randleman of. And later victory versus Maria Rua, Dr. Stoppage. He did, uh, he did few left hooks. Maria Rua was bleeding here, and the referee had no choice but to stop the fight in Fukuoka, Japan. But this was a good fight, gotta say. Loss versus Quinton Rampage Jackson. Quinton did a strong knee which placed him right here, Randleman dropped, he laid on the top of him and did few punches, I think four, four or five punches, and this is when Kevin Randleman, when the fight was stopped, actually. And the later defeat of Kazushi Sakuraba, submission armbar, was also Pride Fun and Conflict 2003. Kazushi Sakuraba was known to be a huge fighter, and Randleman was always weak on submissions, you know and he was submitted via armbar, a strong submission. And the most hatred moment of Kevin Randleman's career when he defeated my favorite fighter, Mirko Krokop. Oh man, I hated him that much there. And I still am, because I'm a huge fighter, a huge fan of Mirko Krokop. When he punched him with strong left hook, Mirko went down. Randleman was holding him on the top of him. Mirko widespread his hands, probably trying to catch him. He just did few hammer fists. Unfortunately, Mirko went down. This was a KO. Later, versus Fyodor Emelianenko, maybe the most controversial match ever since in the beginning. He dropped him with that strong German suplex, Fyodor. I don't know what saved Fyodor from huge, um, how to say, from huge injury. I really don't know what saved Fyodor. But what I can say is uh, Fyodor was submitting him with Kimura so fastly, I mean. I really can't believe what happened there. Fyodor submitted him via Kimura, like he didn't drop him. 1 minute 18 seconds. Most unbelievable. Ron Waterman. Randleman was throwing him away, but Ron Waterman was heavier. He had 280 pounds. He laid on the top of him, did a submission Americana. And this is the thing when, unfortunately, Randleman lost. Mirko Croc up revenged via strong guillotine. Randleman is going to clinch, clinching, clinching, clinching. But hell yeah. Mirko Croc up with a submission. Strong guillotine for Mirko Croc up. Strong revenge. Well, this was the opening of there. This was a heavyweight. And the Kazuhiro Nakamura was won via. Anonymous decision because Hiro Nakamura defeated him and then he returned to light heavyweight. So Hiro Nakamura was a judo fighter, he was more active. Later win of the, over Fatih Kochemish, anonymous decision. Mauricio Rua defeated him via submission, knee bar. Uh, very fast when the match started, only 2 minutes 35 seconds. Mauricio was good with submissions. <coughs> and last victory was versus Rio Kawamura. May 18, 2008, Tokyo, Japan. It was an anonymous decision. It was uh, World Victory Road presents Sengoku 2. And four losses. Mike Whitehead, an anonymous decision. Stanislav Netko, an anonymous decision. Roger Grace. It was a good rare naked choke, despite it was in the third round. St. Louis, Missouri. Roger Grace event on the back of him. Caught him here. Randleman was one. One stepped, Re maybe referee didn't saw this, but Randleman did like this. He was choking, he couldn't breathe anymore. 
in the last fight on May 17, on May 7, 2011, uh, he was defeated from Baga Agaev against submission armbar. He had the dominant position, but unfortunately, Baga Agaev caught him versus his hand did a, did an amazing armbar, and this was the moment when uh, Randleman had to tap. In amateur wrestling, he was NCAA division finalist 1991 and championship 1992-1993. Also, around other things, uh, Kevin Randleman was uh, was suspending uh, was uh, Ryan under influence arrest on August 16, 2007, in the desert of Las Vegas. A variety of charges issues, including drunk driving, following an apparent traffic stop. In personal life: He married his college sweetheart Barbara on August 98, 2000. After hardships, they divorced on May 26, 2005. Kevin married his longtime girlfriend and publicist, the former Elizabeth Broglia, on April 20, 25, 2009. He had a son by Tina Black, a daughter caught by Jaime Hoje, and a son by Broglia. Randleman died, unfortunately, on February 11, 2016, due to heart failure after being admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. Unfortunately, pneumonia took his life. He was only 44 years old. So, I'm bowing to, Kendra, to Kevin Randleman. Rest in peace. You made an undeletable trail and you left it in the world of UFC. And you will always be remembered. I'm sorry for your loss, man. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and subscribe us on YouTube. Send us your propositions to make sure to see your favorite fighter in this show. Thanks and see you all in the next episode.